Bora TV. The world is thinking. So NSA was collecting this information because information equals power in a bureaucracy. And there was a compulsive need to collect it and to hoard it and to hold on to it, even though it was not always of value to the people that they were trying to serve in the community, in the intelligence community. That compulsion has effectively spread across the government. And I think what it's come to is this, that for the billions of dollars since 9-11 that we've spent on security, for the political capital that's been lost and the personal credibility that's been destroyed, for the faith in government that's been eroded, we have essentially created an official system of surveillance that is very good at collecting dots and doesn't do a very good job of connecting them. There are two big consequences to this that bear directly on all of our lives. One is that if the government is over collecting information, the risk of course is there that they will collect on the wrong people. In fact, we have seen evidence of this. In January of 2009, it was revealed that in the course of trying to monitor the emails of certain foreign targets, the NSA inadvertently swept up thousands of innocent Americans' emails. The problem is that on the internet, the emails are all mixed up and it's very hard to know when something's coming from an American or a U.S. person or resident versus a foreign person you're trying to monitor. And actually, the system is so good at collecting and so bad at spotting these kinds of errors that officials at NSA didn't even know they'd collect it on Americans until weeks after they'd done it. They actually had to go back and audit it retroactively. That's how fast these systems are collecting. The failure to connect that information and to make sense of it is also a major risk, and that is that history will repeat, that the intelligence agencies will once again fail to find the warning signals of an attack before it is too late because they are simply drowning in information. That's precisely what happened recently on Christmas Day. As I'm sure you all are familiar, on December 25th, a young Nigerian man named Umar Farouk Abdul Mutalib boarded a Northwest Airlines flight from Amsterdam to Detroit with an underwear strapped to, with, pardon me, with a bomb strapped to his underwear. Uh, fortunately, it failed to detonate, but this provides a fascinating window into how the system works today and what's wrong with it. What did the government know about Umar Farouk Abdul Mutala before he got on that airplane? Well, number one, in November of 2009, his father had walked in to the U.S. Embassy in Abuja, Nigeria, and reported that he was afraid his son had gone to Yemen to join up with al-Qaeda radicals. Number two, the National Security Agency, NSA, the BAG, had actually intercepted discreet phone calls of al-Qaeda operatives in Yemen talking about a new operation in a Nigerian, their words, that they had employed for this task. The third piece, after Abdul Muttalib's father went into the embassy, staff there actually sent the younger Abdul Muttalib's name back to Washington to be deposited in a master database of known or suspected terrorists where it sat unnoticed until he got on that plane. No one had fused these three pieces of information, these critical pieces. And I'm not suggesting that had they done it, they would have instantly known who this guy was, but it would have certainly given them cause to look deeper into this developing plot. Effectively, right now, the agencies and the agents who are responsible for doing that task are drowning in information. At the National Counterterrorism Center outside of Washington, which is where all these streams of information converge on a daily basis and people are supposed to spot the next airline bomber, there are actually between four and 8,000 individual names coming in every single day into their databases, people that they're supposed to follow up on. That master database into which Abdul Muttalib's name went after the November visit by his father today contains half a million names or aliases of known or suspected terrorists. Even the people who work on those databases will tell you <laughs> that there are not half a million terrorists in the world actively plotting against the United States. The data is prone to error. There are duplicates. Sometimes I think information is just deposited there and it's never seen again. Um, and the connection technology, the software to make sense of all this does not exist. There is no Google in the intelligence community right now that would allow an agent to sit down at a computer, type out the name Abdul Muttalib, and immediately know what's in all of these different databases, of which there are dozens right now across the government. They have not been connected still years after 9-11.